the Miami Heat's Twitter account made it official earlier Wednesday, the Heat traded Tyler Johnson and Wayne Ellington to the Phoenix Suns for Ryan Anderson. Although some Heat fans did not approve of the trade, allow me to make my case that Heat executives Pat Riley and Andy Ellisberg made a smart move earlier today, one that makes sense from basketball and financial perspectives. Let's start with basketball. After the Heat's first-round playoff exit to the Philadelphia 76ers last year, Riley said that the Heat had a log jam, with too many good to great players, in nowhere is that more glaring than in the backcourt. Eric Spolstra has had to juggle minutes among Goran Dragic, Josh Richardson, Justice Winslow, Rodney McRuder, Dwayne Wade, Tyler Johnson, Dion Waiters and Wayne Ellington this season. Result, Ellington, who was a key cog in the Heat's offense just a year ago, only managed to get playing time when someone else was hurt. McRuder goes from a starter for much of the year to the end of the bench. Spolster finds minutes for waiters after a year-long absence due to injury when Dragic is battling an injury of his own, but questions remain as to how Spolster balances his rotation. Besides, the Heat only matched a four-year, $50 million offer sheet that Tyler Johnson signed with the Brooklyn Nets back in 2016 after Wade signed with the Chicago Bulls. Miami also initially signed waiters to a one-year deal after the Heat's franchise player left. Wade's return to Miami about a year ago made the Heat moves to sign Johnson and Dion Waiters seem superfluous. But with Wade now in his final NBA season, it wouldn't have made sense to trade both Johnson and Waiters. Now, the Heat are giving up two capable three-point shooters, including Ellington, their only great shooter from a long distance. But looking at Miami's other backcourt players, including Justice Winslow, who is attempting nearly four threes per game this year and making them at a 38% clip, the Heat should have enough. Now let's look at this trade from a financial perspective. With the increasing resurgence of fourth-year guards Winslow and Richardson, Miami's long-term contracts to James Johnson and Waiters given in 2017 look misguided. Add in overpaid players like Hassan Whiteside and Tyler Johnson, and this middling Heat team was well over the punitive luxury tax threshold. And in just one trade, the Heat saved a lot of money. See these tweets below from NBA salary cap guru Albert Namad. This is absolutely brilliant work by the Miami Heat. They drop from $6.3 million to just $1.2 million over the tax line, $8 million savings, and put themselves in striking distance of avoiding it altogether, for 2018-19, and turn a $19.2 million player option into a $15.6 million partial guarantee for 2019-20, Albert Namad, at Albert Namad, February 6, 2019 I quote the heat as being $1.2 million over the luxury tax line, but, in practical reality, they're probably more like $176 thousand dollars over pending Kelly Olenek's one million dollars bonus for playing 1,700 minutes. He needs to average 24 minutes over Heat's final 30 games to achieve it. Albert Namad at Albert Namad, February 6, 2019 Now, the Heat still have several hours left to get under the tax, and Elisberg is a skilled tactician of working the NBA salary cap rules. The Heat could execute a small, cost-cutting trade, like trading Magruder, or attempt a bigger trade involving Whiteside or Dragic. But Miami looks to be in much better financial shape than they were just 24 hours ago. That's a win, 